In this video, we're going to do something you'd think only Hubble or the James Webb Space Telescope could do. <sighs> Using a massive 14-inch amateur telescope, we're going to peer live into the heart of the burning nuclear furnace that is the Orion Nebula. Look at it, it's awesome. And see if we can see another solar system. Oh, look at that. You heard me right, folks. We're going to try and spot an alien solar system, an extra solar solar system. Cannot wait. The music for this Astro Biscuit mission is brought to you by His Majesty King Richtenstein. Details of all the Astro gear used in this video on my website, link below. You can support the channel by making a donation, becoming a patron, or buying one of our high quality prints. In this video, I want to see an extrasolar solar system, or exosystem. For those who don't know, an exosystem is an alien version of our own solar system. It's a star with planets and comets and dust and gas going round it. The difference is that it's many light years away, which is why most of us have never seen one. Because from Earth, all we can see is the central star. But most of us don't have access to one of the biggest amateur telescopes on the market. Last time I used it to get incredible views of our solar system. Now I want to see if it has the power to show me another solar system. Of course, we ain't going to have much luck from the big smoke. Two hours south of London is the popular stargazing location of Bigner Hill. I've decided to book a night at the bottom of the hill in this bed and breakfast, where the very wonderful hostess Angie, Angie everyone, kindly let me set up the huge scope in her garden. The scope weighs 26 kilograms. It's basically the biggest scope one amateur nerd can pick up by himself. As it's worth more than my car, I'm hiring this one from amateur astronomer <laughs> Alex Gill. How much is that in you? Just shy of 10,000. And because the scope and gear end up weighing more than 30 kilograms, <sighs> my mate Andrew Bye, mate. Have a good drive. has had to lend me yeah, his slow. brand new Skywatcher CQ350 mount. It's claimed it can take 35 kilograms. Uh, 35 kilos, yes. And, but notice the word claimed. Yeah. They don't, don't, no, no one knows, no do one they? Knows, no one knows, no. Thing is, even with 16 grand's worth of state-of-the-art astro gear, if we want to see an exosystem, we're going to have to be extra clever. The main problem is that stars are so brilliantly bright that you can't see any of the planets and comets and stuff that's going around them. But if we can catch a young solar system before the star at its centre ignites, then we might stand a chance. These baby solar systems are surrounded by a bubble of gas and dust, which glows when hit by ultraviolet radiation from a nearby star. Tonight, we're going to try and see solar systems being born. That is what I would love. The best place to look is going to be the Great Nebula of Orion. It's the craziest, most active part of our galactic neighbourhood, and this is surely where all the young solar systems are hanging out. Now Orion will rise there. She will go over Bigner Hill, not by much, and then she'll dip down at about, I don't know, 12 into those trees over there. Because Orion is low on the horizon, we'll be looking through a lot of wobbly atmosphere. And that's a problem, because any shot longer than, well, a fraction of a second is going to get blurred by the wobbly atmosphere. So I want to take incredibly short exposures to see what details can be revealed. I'll probably get my shortest and therefore sharpest shots with this £2,000 mono QHY268M camera. Absolutely amazing camera. But it might be we actually discover another solar system with this planetary camera, which costs 300 quid. This little camera is amazing because it can shoot in colour or, if you swap out the filters, infrared. And just like with Mars, we're going to get a live video feed of the core of Orion. And if we need even more resolution, we can 
Take that video feed and use lucky imaging techniques to stack the frames and get an even sharper still image. So we're going to find out what amazing things we can discover in this incredible Stella nursery. I really, really am hoping we might just get the teeniest glimpse of things that most people don't even realise are there. It's time everyone. I got some ski pants. Oh, but every time I bend down, it kind of pops. They must be badly made or something. Annoyingly, it wasn't just my ski pants that were having problems. It's steaming up, folks. It's blooming steaming up. I mean, who'd have thought it, eh, that you actually would spend £10,000 on a telescope and end up needing a hairdryer to get it to work? Let's do it. There's Orion. Looks like a fuzzy blob to the naked eye. Through my regular scope, it looks like this with 10 second exposures. Now for the big scope, okay. with just one tenth of a second exposures. Right. Oh, look at that. We are massively zoomed in on the normally overexposed burning core of Orion. Look at that. Look at it, it's awesome. All right, it looks dark. Don't worry, we're gonna turn the brightness up in a minute. But before we do, there is the core of Orion. And at the core of the core of Orion is the trapezium, which is five, not four, five stars, each one 10 times more massive than the sun, blasting out UV radiation, which is eating away at the gas, creating this cavity. And as we've got it dim now, you can clearly see the cavity. So there it is. All right, be ready. We're gonna turn the brightness up. <sighs> Blooming heck, too bright. Oh, this just looks absolutely astonishing. I'd never thought you could watch something live like this. It's a thousand light years away. And that there, that red, red bar is the Orion bar. That's where the uh, UV rays are sort of hitting the wall, the bar, and they're eating away at it, which is why it's glowing red. If we're lucky, the UV rays will also be eating away at the young solar system's bubbles, making them glow too. The weather is beginning to turn, so we better get on with it. Bubbles, 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 where are you? Let's see if we can find us another solar system. Wow. Oh, there's, what is, could it be? Could that be something? Yeah, there's quite a few little candidates, but those two red blobs, I think, are our best bet. We can verify we found a young solar system by locating the baby star at its centre, which should shine brightly in infrared. This is it, folks. Tiddly break in the clouds. Don't know if you can see. Hmm. <laughs> Not much of a break at all, but we're going for it in infrared. Let's see. Ooh. <laughs> The infrared filter reveals Orion is awash with young stars on the cusp of ignition. It's like someone turned the lights on on a Christmas tree. And one young star is sitting in the middle of one of the bubbles I was interested in. This top one has a star shining in infrared inside it, inside a bubble. It's very exciting, folks. I think we've found a young solar system and it's gonna be about the same size as our solar system, which gives you a sense of just how vast the Orion Nebula is. Because I've sort of got a handle on how big our solar system is. It's basically the furthest a man-made machine has traveled. Voyager 1 and Voyager 2 just reached the edge of our solar system a couple of years ago. So it's taken 40 years for mankind to travel from the center to the edge of that bubble.
if we're right. To be sure, I need to gather as much data as I can so that I can then use lucky imaging techniques to get an even sharper picture of Orion's core. Uh, cloud, blooming cloud. There's a gap. Let's do it. It's drifting off. Oh, it's gone past the meridian. Better do a quick flip. Lucky clouds. That was it, oh, we're back. The umpteen cloud delays means I'm yet to switch to my sensitive 2,000 pound mono camera. And soon, Orion will be setting behind those trees. Oh, it's clear. The only thing is, right? Well, now I've meridian flipped. It's entirely possible that I need to recollimate. To check collimation, I have to take the telescope out of focus and see if the stars are a perfect donut okay. shape. Do I risk checking my donuts? But right now, every second counts. Crap. Yes, I'm gonna have to check my donuts again. These out of focus stars are not donut shaped, so I had to recollimate. God knows how this is gonna turn out, but I'll tell you one thing. Damn sharp. Because mono cameras are more sensitive than color cameras, I'm able to reduce the exposure time by half, so the wobbly atmosphere will have less time to wobble, making my shots even sharper. And the dark dust lanes now are so crisp. It really, really is an astonishing view. Whew. We only got 10 minutes on Orion with the sensitive mono camera before she set behind the trees, but it was the best 10 minutes of the night. It's been good. Speed really good. Awesome. We won't know how good until I get back to London and start processing the two terabytes of data that I've captured. It's taken two days. I had 30,000 frames, uh, most of which got thrown away, only leaving the sharpest ones. And the very sharpest data came from that black and white, that mono camera at the end. That was the sharpest. But I also got data from other nerds in my group, Big Amateur Telescope. And let's see what we got. This is Orion's core in more detail than I have ever seen it before. Anyway, we want to see if we really did shoot another solar system. So let us zoom in to what I thought was a baby solar system bubble thingy. Here we go. It's just between these two stars here. And there it is. A bubble with a little star in the center. That is another solar system. But there's something even more amazing in this shot, which I didn't see on the night. If we go to the other side of the core, we can see this dark dust just sort of floating around. Now between that dust cloud and the core is a young solar system whose star just happens to be hidden by a disk of dark dust from which the planets are gonna form. And we just happen to be at an angle where that disk shape is perpendicular to us like this. And there is the disk. It's being silhouetted by the bright core, but we've got it. We are looking at a protoplanetary disk. That's another solar system that we've found. And we can get a sense of just how blooming big this nebula is compared with, say, our solar system. I mean, it is really one of the wonders of our galaxy. Now, I know a lot of nerds force their better halves to watch Astro Biscuit shows. Well, this next bit is for you guys. Wouldn't it be great if for Christmas you could get the not quite as good as you nerd in your life a limited edition print of this incredible nebula, one that comes with a special certificate of authenticity. Then your nerd half could bore everyone who came round by telling them that this little dot here was about the size of our solar system. Well, you're in luck because I've just come back from one of the best printers in the world and they're willing to do a print run of 100 prints 
we're going to be using this rather fancy paper, which I don't know if you can tell, but there is no reflection of this paper and the darks are darker and the whites are whiter. There's only going to be 50 mid-sized prints like this produced and 50 large size of the whole nebula like this one. Prices start from £65 and that includes postage no matter where in the world you live. If you're interested then you probably want to join my mailing list, link in the description below because the first people to find out when the print run starts are those on my mailing list because when they're gone, they're gone. And the reason they're not available to buy now is because something quite important has gotten in the way of me getting the prints sorted and putting them on the right paper and all the other stuff that goes into making the prints look brilliant. And this is the reason. Hey, Kerry, how you doing? Not too bad. What are you working on? Uh, Betty. Betty, there's oh. Betty. That's the scope we're gonna take to the Canaries. I'm hoping to prove that Betty is nearly as sharp as the giant telescope that sits atop a Kitt Peak. And to do that, we have to go somewhere where the atmosphere is extraordinarily calm. And happily, my incredible supporters have paid for me, Kerry, Rick, Pink Bunny and Betty to go to the Canaries. How many days till uh, we fly to the Canaries? Uh, five days. Six. Five. Five, really. Yeah, five. Five days till we fly to the Canaries uh, to test out Betty. She's not looking 100% ready, is that, is that true? Oh, that's not true. <laughs> She's 100% ready in bits. <laughs> <laughs> we are up to our necks in it, basically, uh, trying to get Betty and all the other stuff sorted for our trip to the Canaries. If everything has gone to plan, then we should be there right now. Find out how we get on in real time by following us on Facebook and Instagram. A massive thank you to Richtenstein for the wonderful tunes. Down below are links to his new album. Thanks to Kerry. I know it's going to be done. I know it's going to be brilliant. Huge thank you to my patrons. I absolutely wouldn't be able to do this without you guys. And do buy this print. You're going to be one of only a handful of people who has it. So it's going to make a very nice present for someone. If you're a nerd and you want to find out more about deep space lucky imaging techniques, then check out my video, NASA said we couldn't do it, and also my website where there is even more detailed theory. And there are links to particular cameras and telescopes that I think work well for deep space lucky imaging. There's also my top picks for what telescopes to buy, whatever your budget. And the final shout out goes to my amazing, incredible mods who help keep my Discord server afloat. Thank you guys. See you on the other side when we come back from the Canaries. I forgot to mention the fix for the SCT Dew problem is to use Celestron's own Dew Heater, which fits directly onto the corrector plate. Affiliate links on my website. All right, that should be it. Bye.